hey guys welcome back to the channel it is kelly michelle i want to really say thank you to everyone who stopped by my channel to check out my video on relationship traumas thank you for all the comments thank you for reaching out i just want to say thank you very much and if you have not seen that video i am going to leave it in the cards here now today's video we're going to be doing a little makeup and having a little chit chat now for today's video we will be discussing signs that you are in a toxic relationship yes my loves signs that we're in a toxic relationship and a lot of times why i feel like it's important for us to have this conversation you know sometimes we're in these toxic relationships and we don't realize that the relationship that we're in is toxic so these are just some signs to look out for they are not all the signs there is but these are just a few signs to look for you know if you are experiencing these or you're seeing them and i was really i was going to talk about this this um topic anyways um i don't know if you could hear the sirens passing i'm sorry for that if you can but yeah back to what i was saying um I was going to talk about this topic, but then recently, if you've been on social media, there's this couple that, um, you know, a lot of people see, saw them as relationship goals and all of that. And they recently went through a breakup, but, and that's another thing like relationship goals, looking at somebody's relationship and, you know, trying to compare your life to that. That's something I will wholeheartedly tell you, do not do but as i was saying again um i was prompted by this to to talk about this that signs that you know you may be in a toxic relationship so the first sign that you may be in a toxic relationship is if your partner feel the need to constantly love bomb you now let me say this there's nothing wrong with with being complimented by your partner do not take this the wrong way not not don't say i said that if your husband or your partner or your whoever your partner is constant um tells you that you know what i love you i find you attractive you are my yin to my yang that is not what i'm saying what i'm saying is if if your partner feel any that every two seconds that they have to tell you that oh you're so pretty you're so you, 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 oh my god your smile is amazing constantly that's love bombing and that is a uh, emotional manipulative tactic that is used by manipulators by emotional manipulators they use this as a way to control you so emotionally you're now dependent on that person to say you're beautiful you're you, you know to to validate you to va so you feel good about yourself and as i said this is a tactic that emotional manipulators use and if you're not and it's easy to miss this sign it's so easy to miss this sign because you're seeing this as love you're seeing this as my partner being affectionate but you know they always say anything um too much of one thing good for nothing so be wary and be mindful of this these people is em emotional manipulated. They're so skilled at this that it is so hard sometimes to recognize that, you know, this person is actually using this to draw me in. Because once you're in as an individual, you know, they have you to themselves. And once you are depending on them emotionally, then they're able to distance you from your friends, your family. So you're because you're so dependent on them it is easy for them to control you because once you're emotionally invested in someone you know it's hard to pull back it's hard to see that what this person is doing or saying is harmful instead of you know being good for me it's actually harmful for me so i become so emotionally tied to this person and then once you're emotionally tied to this person this person can do anything with you because once your emotion is involved it's a done deal um, after the love bomb they tend to want to monitor you constant monitor you you know they want to know who your friends are you are not allowed to have friends outside of their sphere of friends so that there's nobody in your circle to tell you, you know what 
this is crazy whatever is going on so they tend to want to control who you hang with where you go what do you do then they start to tell you how to dress so these are signs if you're in a relationship and and i'm not like and again as i said you have to be very careful that you do not um that we're not mixing um good intentions for bad or or vice versa having bad intention looks good you know what i'm saying this person may call you constantly you're constantly receiving calls where are you at what are you doing um on your lunch break on your and i'm when i'm saying this because i don't want it to seem like i'm saying that you, your partner won't can't check in on you or they them checking in on you to see to make sure that you're good there's something wrong with that but it's the constant you can't do anything or you can't go anywhere without their approval or they know like for example if you go to work or school or your home and you decide to step out and that person is not there and you did not run it by them or say something it's a big issue because they don't know where you are and they don't know who you are with so now they're not concerned about your safety really they're just concerned about who is around you who will be able to influence you you, you get what i'm saying i want you to understand you have to know the difference there's a difference between concern and there's a difference between separating you from your friends your family and people around you and another way they monitor you is by constantly monitoring who texts your phone who calls your phone all of that that's monitoring you that's not concern that's monitoring they want to know who you are in contact with and that is a toxic trait that is toxic that's not healthy when i'm not saying that if you are doing something for the person to be concerned that they won't ask or they can't ask but if it's a constant ask, then you gotta check yourself and say hmm is this healthy or is this person doing too much so um for my face i really didn't say what i'm actually using for my face so far so for my foundation i'm using this um elf flawless uh foundation and i mix it because i tend to love to mix my foundation with this juvia space as i am foundation in the shade um what shade is this tanzania yeah so that's what that is that's what's going on with my face so far what i really want us to understand that in a relationship in a um in any healthy relationship individuals need to maintain their identity individuals should be able to you know still be themselves because where we mess up is that we tend to want to to be like the other person or be the other person but it's important for us to understand that we are not the same person we're in a relationship my friends may not be your friends your friends may not be my friends but there are boundaries you know and boundaries goes both ways you can't be constantly trying to monitor somebody that's a toxic trait in relationships people need to maintain individuality individuality and if you can't once you if the partner if one partner starts to monitor as i said this is a tactic used to separate people from their friends and their family and once you're separated it can be it can lead to that person if you're not careful becoming physical abusive or more emotionally abusive so the you might say you know this person is so um it's okay he's just you know a little insecure do not just take it as face value this could go way deeper you need to check that person to say yes we are in a relationship but you know i'm still an individual i do not have to run my everyday move by you before i do it i don't have to do that that's not something i have to do yes i will let you know 
that I'm there and I'm okay but you feel the need that I can't do anything outside of getting permission it's not something that you should allow because once that person gets used to constantly calling you and getting you and knowing exactly where you at before you move you say oh can I go here I go there they're going to expect you to do it all the time. And once you don't do it, it's going to cause an issue. It's going to seem like, okay, something is going on because this is out of character for her. Who is she around? Who is he around? So you have to be mindful. And if you see something like this, you just got to say, you know what? Let's pause right here. This is not going to happen. You understand? Nip it in the bud. The sign that you may be in a toxic relationship is if your partner feel the need to change who you are at your core now again these a lot of these signs they may seem innocent but they're not you have to be careful of that if you if your partner constantly wants you to be um why can't you be more like x y and z you know this is this person trying to change who you are at your core and you can't allow who because once the person starts dictating or trying to change who you are, then now your identity is whomever that person wants you to. And this is a tactic that is used a lot by manipulators. They, they may think or may say, okay, this is for the best because who you are, because what that person is essentially saying to you inadvertently is once they, if they're trying to change who you are, who you are is not good enough. I can make you better so they're telling you that you you're not good enough so they start planting that seed of doubt within you just so that they can control you and this is a big manipulate manipulative sign they're trying to tell you how to okay you need to dress a certain way because um I don't like how you dress you dress too skimpy or and i'm not saying that you can't be modest or whatever i'm just using how you dress as an example or you're too conservative i need you to show a little bit more skin or i need you to button up you're showing too much skin you know what i'm saying things like that they want to change who you are or oh, don't talk like that um forget the patois just speak english standard english and knowing that you know i am jamaican and I speak Pato, it's my first language. But I'm just using these as example. These are not the only thing. But if who you are at the core, the person is trying to tell you, don't be like that. That is definitely a sign that that person is trying to control who you are. And it may seem like, you know what, they just want the best for me. You know, where I'm at right now in my life, this is not where I should be. They're going to help me. They're just trying to help me to be more professional. They're just helping me to fit in. But darling, what you need to realize is that this person is trying to change who you are. You know, if it it's a difference if it had come to you, if it came to you as an individual to say, you know what? Maybe I should stop um, wearing this because, you know, maybe I'm at the age where I no longer feel comfortable dressing a certain way. But if you're going to say to me that you got to change this because I don't like it, you got to change it because, you know, this is not who I want to be with. But... You knew who I was before we got into a relationship. So you trying to change this is just you trying to control who I am, basically. So you should definitely look out for the individuals who want to change who you are at the core of your being. At the core of your being, you're who you are. And nobody should have that authority to change. Now, if as I... As I ugh, got a tongue tied right there but as i said if you see or feel the need to change something about yourself that's quite fine there's nothing wrong with wanting to change after you get to a certain age you want to change but when it becomes a problem is when somebody wants to change who you are and you don't want to change you don't see nothing wrong with who you are but this individual is bent on saying you know what you're not good enough in this stage. I don't like you this way. So we're going to change you. 
then that's the problem. The problem is not the changing, but if it's somebody else outside of you who wants to change you to make you more palatable for them or whoever they're around, that's the issue. For my eyes, I'm using this um, Color Story palette. And I'm going into the shade Cyberpunk. Going into this shade called Cyberpunk. Um, so the next sign that you may be in a toxic relationship is if your partner keeps score every time you mess up. If every time you mess up, your partner constantly feel the need to remind you or keep score of the last thing you did, the last time you messed up. Oh, for example, oh, remember you, you left the... Um, you left the keys in the door or something so every anything that's to your detriment where you're not seen in a good light but there's a constantly keeping off scores that you know you're not you didn't do this well or anything that places you in a bad light if your partner constantly do this that is a sure sign that your relationship is toxic because relationship is not about keeping scores they're not about keeping scores uh, to see who's right or who's wrong or who's always messing up. No, it's not that. That's not what it is Relationships are not about that Relationships are about growing together You know, I may mess up, but I still love you I'm not keeping score of your shortcomings and if you're in a relationship where your shortcomings They're always on display. You always feel like you know you have to be right because if you're not right you won't hear the end of it that that's toxic you don't need to be in that you need to get out of that that's that's to your detriment anything that's to your detriment you don't need to be a part of it y you know what i'm saying and you may not see all of these traits you know you may not see all of these traits but if you see them one either you're gonna nip them in the bud or you're gonna walk away but don't settle for them don't think it's okay don't think you know this is just how that person is yes this is just how that person is and that simply means that person is not going to change so you're going to live the rest of your life walking on eggshells around that person that's another trait of a toxic relationship you feel like you always got to be on you have to be on you can't be off you're always looking out for when you know when that person is gonna say oh you messed up again you did this you did this wrong you didn't do that right that's too much work that's way way too much work that's too much work that there's nothing healthy about that relationship that relationship now becomes a job so <laughs> I don't know who wants to be working <laughs> you know be in a job in their relationship yes i know relationships their work and they take um work to you know come through or be be successful because you know you have to work at your relationship but if i have to constantly be on eggshells around my partner i ain't got time for that that's that's for the birds not me i don't have time for that and these are sure signs that this person you know life is toxic and nobody should want to or should have to be around somebody that keeps telling them or reminding them of their shortcomings nobody nobody because i don't want nobody to remind me constantly that i'm not doing this or i'm not doing no sir uh -uh. that's a lot of work that's too much work that's too too much work i did not sign up for that I did not sign up for that and I will not settle for that you should never ever settle for that I'm gonna go into this shade here called this I don't know where I'm going with this look but I'm going in with this interface the shade interface and I'm going into that space right there um so what I did was I I went in with interface and what I'm doing is just putting it in that negative space that I have. And don't worry, I'm going to go in and blend everything out once I'm totally satisfied with everything. So don't worry about the look. The look will come together, but just give me a few while I, you know, 
touch up now the next sign that you may be in a toxic relationship is when your partner becomes verbally abusive now remember first they love bomb you then they isolate you now because of you separating and all of that now they have a chance to become verbally abusive and this verbally ab they, and once they start this trait you know, of becoming abusive to you verbally it doesn't matter where you are they will make you feel insignificant they will call you out of your name they'll do all types of things because the whole idea initially when they um started love bombing you was to get you to a place where your identity yourself your self-worth is wrapped up in them and then after a while you become so dependent on them for your assurance that you're beautiful that you're loved that you're worthy of love you're worthy to be treated kind and they pull that from underneath you and so they become very abusive and that will shatter you why because you're so used to them praising you all the time see what that's what i was saying initially with the love bombing the love bombing is just was just a topic a tactic to get you to believe in them and then it opens up the door for them to become verbally abusive to you and once they become verbally abusive trust and believe it will start to become physically abusive they will so for the eyes what i did was i went in to with interface right here this purple shade then i went in with gia this green shade right here so it's the purple then the green i'll go through it and these are beautiful spring colors because you know we're in spring now so guys what i'm doing is i'm taking this brush just to blend out the line of demarcation i kind of love this look the purple and the green and then i'm gonna take the take this purple shade right here the matte purple cyberpunk and go under my waterline these manipulators know when they have you in their clutch once they they become verbally abusive your self-worth is destroyed your opinions your self-esteem they have no value so you all oh, you always have to pay close attention to these signs you know to to be able to delineate to be able to tell when your relationship or if your relationship has become toxic not all relationship will become toxic but these are just signs that you have to nip in the bud because if you don't your relationship will man it will become toxic there's no going back once their toxic traits starts to come and you allow them to flourish your your partner the partner becomes more dominating and they feel like you know what i have control of this they have the reins so if you go out if you do too much they have the reins to pull you back and these are tactics that they used to pull you back to keep you in place and they become very abusive the really and from thenceforth the relationship can become very abusive. all right y'all so we made it to the end of the video and we spoke about these toxic traits and um signs that you may be in a toxic relationship um i'm gonna get into the face but before we get into the face and the products we uh used on the face i just want to go over a couple ways that you can actually detox yourself your life from uh these toxicity or these toxic traits in the relationship you know get rid of them out of your life these steps are not the only way you could detox your life but i just want to put them in here so that you know that there's hope if you're in a toxic relationship there's hope you know all is not lost them so when they dead not dash away so we're not dash it we're not you know that's what we sell for nothing but there are things that we can do. and if you see me looking down it's because i have these written down in my notes you know may i get older may can't keep nothing too much too much uh -uh. 
So let's get into this. Uh, the first thing is take it step by step. Start your day by empowering yourself. Start by reaffirming that you are welcome, you are loved, you are you're enough you know all good things come from you start daily with daily affirmations you know so you can build back your self-esteem don't feel that all is lost all is not lost you just start talk to yourself look in the mirror you know in my house in my bathroom maybe one day i'll show you guys maybe i won't <laughs> most likely i probably won't i don't know but on my mirror in my bathroom i have words of affirmation that when I'm washing my face, I say to myself, so little stuff like that. I have little post-it notes and they're nothing fancy, you know, some post-it that I just take them off, write words of affirmation and stick on them. And occasionally, like after they start fading, I will write, rewrite them. Some I would, some I will add, some I'll remove. Cause like the ones that, you know, over the years I've thought about them and I'm like, okay, this no longer aligns with the person I am or whatever, I'll take that out. So that's one thing I do. I write down words of affirmation on my mirror. I say to myself, I don't say it every time I'm in the mirror, but it's always there. You know, so when you brush your teeth, you can see it. The next thing is um, track how you feel. If you're, you believe that, you know, every time a particular thing happens, you feel low. So you make a note of it, whether it is mentally or you write it down. You make a note of it. So every time it comes around, you know exactly what it is and what's causing it. So you can put a stop to it. Because if you're not able to identify it, you know, the thing is, you have to be able to identify it. So once you're able to identify it, you can work on it. You can say, okay, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm not taking. So always try to identify it. Identify the behavior that is toxic. You know what I mean? So if the person constantly tell you, you know, say, look, boy, me don't know you look so, you look so, you look mash up. Uh-uh. You stop it right there. You're not going to self, you're not going to, to, to start talking down on me. So now I start feeling bad. You stop it in the bud. So once you can identify it, so the main thing is always identify it. Keep track of it so you can identify it. The next step in detoxing your life of a toxic relationship is prioritizing your safety priority para hmm, oh you said that word prioritizing your safety hmm help me <laughs> yes prioritizing your safety always remember your safety comes first your se safety comes first second to none if you feel like th if this relationship becomes so toxic nine out of ten times it can become abusive physically abusive emotionally abusive so you need to prioritize your safety because once the the, the the toxic person realize you know they no longer have hold of you they no longer have a say in what you do or what you not don't do they might become violent you understand so you always have to prioritize your safety whatever that is for you if it means i have to put that person out maybe that's what you're gonna have to do maybe I'm gonna have to move maybe that's what you're going to have to do maybe I'm, I have to move in with a parent or a family member maybe that's what you have to do maybe I have to move from this part of town cut off all friends related to that person you got to do that you got to do that so always um, prioritize your safety um, the next point is ask for help ask for help it can be hard asking for help once you've identified these um, toxic traits in the relationship. But trust me, nine out of ten times, there's somebody out there that's gone through it, and not nine out, not necessarily nine out of ten people gone through it. Because I don't want to put it out here that a lot of us are most of us out here in toxic relationship. But what I'm saying is, somebody might have gone through it, so they may be able to tell you a few steps what they've done to, you know, be able to bring themselves out of it. So. 9 out of 10 times, just, why I keep saying 9 out of 10 times? What, what I'm trying to say is basically ask for help and support. Ask for help and support and you will get it. Somebody will be there to get it. There are hotlines that you can, if you are not, if you don't confident your, your, your immediate circle, if you don't confident your friends, there are strangers that you can turn to for help, you know, to get that help. And the last thing I want to say as it relates to um this is, 
give yourself time give yourself grace it's not all gonna happen once you identify that, that you're in toxic relationship when you're trying to detox your life of this toxicity it's not going to happen all at once but it's the steps you take that is what is most important so um as i said give yourself time give yourself grace but once you move just move do whatever you need to do and there i don't want to let it seem as though you're all is going to be well there are going to be days that you might feel you might relapse and want to reach out there are going to be days when you know you won't feel your best but you know what you're not where you you were before you get what i'm saying you're not where you want to be but still yet you're not where you don't want to be i hope that makes sense to you guys um let's get into this look because i did do a look um the focus was not necessarily on the look but you know since we did it let's talk about it all right so for the face i have on these two foundations i mix them together because i tend to always want to mix my foundation i love mixing foundation it's just what i do it's just something i do um and i am using the i am magic uh foundation from julia's place in tanzania and i mix the flawless satin foundation from elf in uh coco so i mix these two together one to one ratio and that's what i used uh for concealer i used um la girls and i used my remo pack those away so i don't know where those are for the eyes i featured this in a recent haul haul video that i did and i'm hoping you're able to see the eyes the eyes are not overly too much let me turn these lights down so you're able to see it somewhat better too dark now let me see um yeah so on the eyes i have this shade here called cyberpunk and what i did it i run it along the waterline the what do you call yourself the <laughs> the eyeline you know where you put your eyeliner right there and i went up in kind of like a v and i smoked that out and then i went in with this shade called inter interface which is this shimmery purple hope you're able to see it and then right in the inner corner i went in with gia which is this green shade right here and i hope you're able to see it i really love how this look turned out on the lips i i'm a nude girl we all know that but for my lip i'm using this um who's this again oh my i can't remember who it is who this is i'm gonna put it in the description box but this is what it looks like and i'm using this nyx uh butter gloss in perline i mean i use this all the time i should know the name right and for mascara i went in with my waterproof long lasting mascara from elf so that's what's on the face today not going anywhere i hope you enjoyed this video i hope your day is as wonderful as you are and thank you for checking out my video thank you for constantly sh sharing and showing me love on the video and i appreciate you guys i hope your day is as wonderful as you are have a blessed day